Okay, welcome to this special CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE Media, and this is a meet the press kind of tech round table. Chris Primesberger, editor-in-chief of eWeek, good friend. Uh, welcome to the CUBE here Thanks, inside John. the studios here in our office. Thanks a lot, this is a first. This is a meet the press kind of round table, so um, love your coverage. You guys do great content. Do at I e get an exclusive because I'm the only guy here? <laughs> you get the exclusive. You guys, we always see each other at the events. You're doing great work over eWeek. Your growth is up, you guys are winning, successful, um, continuing to do well. Congratulations to all your, your team and yourself. Um, I got to ask you, you were all, you're out scouring the landscape. We had DockerCon this week, Oracle Larry Ellison had a big announcement. Um, a lot of stuff going on in the tech, tech industry. Every day, of every week, another conference, it seems like. And we were just talking about this earlier. I mean, all companies seem to want to do their own conference now. They want to talk to their own users, um, and potential users, and their partners in person and, and give them, show them a good time. And we can certainly do that here in, uh, in San Francisco. It's a target-rich environment, and certainly a lot of action going on. Um, yeah. what, what are you seeing as the top stories that you're covering right now? Because yeah. you guys, a lot going on, there's a lot of noise out there, but you got, you're an editor, you've got to make those decisions, yeah. what to focus in on, what is the, where's the action from your standpoint? That's a good question. That's what I do at eWeek. I'm in charge of our coverage areas. So my job is to be sure that our guys and our women are covering the right stories at the right time, and that we're timely. And fortunately, I don't need to coach a lot because our guys and our women are very, very experienced. They know their beats, they have their resources, they know their contacts, and they know, and they get apprised of the news almost as quickly as the Wall Street Journal and New York Times, but not <laughs> quite. They seem to get the calls first. But, uh, they let but, them break the stories, and then these, the people say, hey, I saw that on the Wall Street Journal, I'm going to see what eWeek thinks. It, well, that's what we do. Yeah. We, we, don't, we don't pretend that we can beat those publications. We can't do that. However, we can add some value to the story for our readers that we know our readers are going to want. A little deeper ex explanation of maybe a little history of what's happening in that yeah. story. More, give them more meat on the bone. You bet, or then we'll talk to an analyst that we trust and get a little more color perspective. Or we'll talk to the CEO of the company who's got an agenda. But you know what, that CEO knows that product, knows that company better than we do. Yeah. And so we'll get multiple sources We'll go into our vast library, and we do have a vast library online. We have over, I don't know how many hundred, a couple hundred thousand stories on it. We, we publish 20 to 25 a business day. Got a lot of flow. So there's a lot of flow, um, and we update the site continuously. So we can go back into our library and pull out factoids that might be relevant to yeah. the today's news. So we can do that pretty quickly. Context and is key, right? You have, it to, is. have to have context. It is. And uh, we might not be first, but we're going to be really good with the story when it comes out. That's, that's kind of what our thing is. What's your take on this whole journalism thing right now? We need more journalism that's high quality like this. I mean, we're doing our best with the Cube and doing our thing. You guys are doing great work. But it seems to be everyone's kind of dying around us. And Giga Ohm went under. You know, I just heard another one went under. Circa News, which is, had a great yeah. mobile app, loved it, went under. Yeah. Um, no one's making money. You know, it's a hard thing. As you'd think the world would want good quality well, content. Well, yeah, absolutely. And trusted sources. We can't have too many trusted sources in any field, wherever you are. Whatever thing you like to write about or you want to learn about or work, the field you work in, you need those trusted sources that can help you personally in that field and help you, um, you know, just expand your knowledge of it, whether it's building model planes or building software, whatever it is. Um, it is sad, and even though I look around and I see some of our competitors are falling by the wayside, I don't wish that on anybody. No, I, I really know. don't, because I've been to the I've been a freelancer before too. I know what it's like. I'm you know, and uh, we've all been laid off or fired at some point. You know, sometime <laughs> I have. You know, I've been laid off, and um, it's not fun. No. It's not. And uh, it, was, it was sad to see. To what's, see your, what's, your, go. what's your mentoring? You know, your son has written on, uh, for Palo Alto and he's a good ball player. Um, you have journalism in your blood, yeah, um, I do, well trained, actually. and that's your expertise. You know, if you, if you were the professor of you know, the, the, the new school of high priest journalism, <laughs> let's just say it's the John and Chris uh, school of journalism, modern, how would you take your knowledge of your experience? mask it to the modern era we're living in, and some about cloud real time, all this new stuff's happening. How can we transform journalism to be the high quality? It's, What's your you know, John, it's all about telling a story, okay? You need, whatever, whatever field of journalism you're in, whatever writing you're doing, whether you're writing a blog, whether you're writing for Bloomberg News, for the New York Times, eWeek, wherever it is, the Cube, your site, and, um, it's all about knowing how to tell a story. Getting the trusted resources that I mentioned before, 
that you have and then bring them to the fore, adding a little bit of value add, whatever your knowledge might be. Uh, it could be an a, opinion, it could be perspective that you've you uh, experienced firsthand that you're bringing to the, to the table. Whatever story that you need to write, you're telling the story. I started out as a sports writer. A lot of us get started off in sports writing, in journalism through sports writing because I wasn't a great athlete, but I could go to the games and write about them. And then, so I got a job after college uh, uh, with the Los Angeles Daily News, and I, I got a really good beat. I covered the Lakers, and I covered USC and UCLA. That's a great beat. You know, I love go Celtics. Yeah, I had to. You know, I had to spend a year doing high school and I paid my dues and stuff. But I did that, and then after a while, we realized that if you're going to be a sports writer, you got to work every night, you got to work every weekend, and it's hard to have a family and do that. You know, quality time. So we made a, an early decision that uh, sports writing was going to be a long-term thing, so I needed a day job. So uh, I ended up moving to uh, another newspaper where I work day, and then uh, I've been doing high-tech for 20 years now, and that's a good day job. Yeah. Although we do travel a lot. Yeah, there's some travel. The also thing that I find with journalism, uh, Chris, is that the, you're right, the storytelling is the art, and I think that is inherently the, on the person, yeah. the creatives, understanding and, s and connecting the dots, smelling the BS from, from the people trying to shovel the story to you. But I think, I think there's going to be a big swing back in growth in journalism. I'll tell you why. My, based on my observation, I'm not a journalist, I was never trained to be a journalist, but you know, being two media companies back to back, there's a replatforming going on at the technical level, right? So there's a lot of technology shifting mm -hmm. and the channels yeah. are expanding, omni-channel. Yeah. So if you factor in, and that has nothing to do with personnel that, or storytelling. That's all about the channels, yeah. the formats are changing, and the underlying infrastructure. So when that stuff sorts itself out, I believe that we're going to see a huge uptake in journalism back again, where the pros can bring the trusted formula of trust, sources, and reliability. Yeah. you got to have a track record. Um, if you're going to be a trusted source. You can't just be somebody coming out of nowhere and write something. You might have a good, a good idea about something. You might cause talk. You might cause lots of com uh, comments in a thread. But um, you've got to have some knowledge. You've got to have some background and some credibility if you're going to get an audience. Yeah, I think people want grade A content. They want meat. They sure want they good. Do. I don't go to a restaurant and, and you know I can get fast food anywhere, right? But I want to find a good meal. You can be entertained. You can, you I, can, you I, can be entertained without having a, you can be entertained by somebody who's funny and it's not necessarily a trusted source. Yeah. But you can be entertained. If you really want to learn something and take it with you, you need a trusted source. Yeah, and I think just the variety is for different formats. But I think the, the quality requires experience and that costs money. So people got to figure out their business models. It's not cheap. Yeah, banner ads business, aren't doing it anymore. Business models for journalism in all its forms are still being worked on. It's all morphing. Yeah. There are paywalls. There are no paywalls. There's advertising. There's no advertising. There's you know. Yeah, no. The consumption and the expectation of the users are changing. Obviously with mobile and multiple channels. Yep. And as this stuff sorts itself out. Well, thanks for coming on here. What are you excited for this summer? Taking some time off? Any big stories you're working on? Share, well, share we're, your exclusives that you got here. Yeah, I want to take some time <laughs> off, yes, but we're also in the process of remaking eWeek. It's needed a, a, a facelift for years. And it's done and we're just put, it's like put, bringing out a new product, a new software product. You got to go through all the steps. Legal, marketing, administration, development, all this stuff. So I'm, uh, we're putting out a new product that hopefully will be out this summer and we'll have new content types on it that we've never had before. And I'm really excited about it. We've been working on it for a year. And so that's so that's my project. I got to ask you kind of the last question, just kind of just, you know, I'm from the East Coast, so I usually use this analogy a lot. I can smell when it's going to snow. You can just know it's going to snow any minute now. The air is cold mm -hmm. and you can just smell the snow. Question for you is, are we close to a bubble burst? Do you, what do you, what, what's going on in the marketplace? What's happening? Is it coming? Is it not coming? No. What does the tea leaves read for you? What's, the, what's that reading? The I'm, tea leaves? Smelling, I'm smelling something. Yeah. I am. And I remember this from 98 and 99, and I lived through the 2000, 2001 bubble. And I got, that's where I got laid off from one of my uh, publications that I was on because, you know, of the yeah, bubble. Yeah, I was, um, did too. The boss set, it was DevX. And you know, it, the ironic thing, John, is that DevX is now part of Quinn Street, which owns eWeek. <laughs> so know. it's like this big circle. DevX didn't die 
but they just lay comes off back everybody. around. Back again, back to my point. Journalism's coming back. I'm telling you, you heard it here first on the Cube conversation. <laughs> it's coming back. There's going to be a big boom in journalism, a big bargain opportunity. I, I think so. But the I bubble think. is coming. I mean, it's interesting. I waffle on this. Dave Vellante and I always debate. I personally feel that a, bu a burst is coming. We're going to have the some. question how big is the correction is going to be right. is going to be a function of where the money is. But on the enterprise side, it's booming. Yeah. There's a ton of dollars coming into yes. that sector. So it might not be a replatforming kind of bubble. It might be like a dot-com bubble where the economics are out of whack. It but, will not be the same kind of bubble we had 15 years ago. It'll be, it won't be as much. Why? Because the infrastructure we have now with broadband everywhere and the software we have now, the devices we have now, I think that there's a much bigger cushion for yeah. something to happen. Yeah. Back then, we just didn't have, a, we didn't have any recourse. We crashed. Yeah, we were talking to Mitchell from HashiCorp and we were at the DockerCon. There's so much radical engineering going on at the architectural level yeah. that that shift is a 10-year cycle. So I think that's going to be a nice 10-year run of wealth creation, in my opinion. So yeah. like the whole cloud movement and mobile internet of things is all kind of coming together. So I think that's going to be a nice cushion. The $50 billion Uber valuation in light of the, the French riots and all this chaos, I just, the, I just don't, I just can't get that. The evaluations are just sky high. Maybe I'm just, you know, get off my lawn kind of old guy, but like, I just, I just, it's so insane, but you know, people making money off of it. Chris, thanks for joining us. This is a Cube conversation uh, here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching and uh, look for the Cube out there. We'll be on the ground covering all the action, extracting the signal noise. Thanks for watching.